on oxygen manufacturing. So before I start, I would request everybody uh, participating in this seminar to please switch off their video and switch off their mic so that uh, you know we can have a flawless uh, seminar over here. If you in between, if you want to ask any question, please feel free to type it and then half an hour we have kept just for question and answer session. So once again, uh, I would like to uh, welcome you to this session. My name is Vikas Mandral and I am co-founder, director and chief marketing officer of Solution Buggy. We are an online platform that connects small and medium scale enterprises with the subject matter experts. We have around 60,000 industries associated with us. So these industries are existing ones or entrepreneurs who want to start the small and medium scale enterprises. And we have 10,000 plus experts associated with us. Last one month, we have seen a surge in demand in interest of people on setting up oxygen plant. And that is how we thought of organizing the seminar. So we have around 100 plus years of experience uh, with us today. What I mean to say, the total number of years of experience that the three uh, um, consultants or experts have uh, together is more than 110 uh, years. So let us take advantage of this. And what we would like to cover here is we'll try to cover the technical aspects of oxygen manufacturing, the operational aspects of uh, manufacturing, the commercial and financial aspects of uh, oxygen manufacturing, and give you an overview of what it is, how it is manufactured, what are the challenges, how much investments it requires, and uh, other few aspects also. In addition to this, if you want to ask any specific questions, please feel free, feel free to do so. You can type it uh, in your in the chat box, and we will take it up uh, from uh, you know in the last half an hour uh, of the session. You can ask the question from a particular expert or from in general from any of the experts. So uh, to set the ball rolling. Uh, I would like to set up the context. Uh, with the shortage of oxygen in the hospitals due to the second wave of COVID in India, the government has temporarily stopped the supply of oxygen for the industries. This has, had, uh, this has led to a huge surge in the demand of oxygen in the country, with both hospitals and industries facing a shortage of oxygen. Uh, just to give you an example of Karnataka, uh, we require around 1,471 metric tons of oxygen to cater to 3,25,000 active cases till yesterday, which is again increasing. So there is a dearth of around 812 metric tons. Uh, so the capacity today is 812 metric tons, but there's a dearth of around 650 tons. So there's a shortage. And, uh, you know, the demand and supply is going to be cyclic, which means that right now the demand is more and the supply is less gradually will increase the supply by increasing the capacity then again after a few time uh, you know it, it it will be a cyclic process so let me introduce you to our first speaker uh, mr sham mudbatkal i hope i have pronounced it correctly uh, mr sham is ex general manager of universal air products he has more than 40 plus years of experience in sales and marketing of air products. Mr. Sham Sundar uh, uh, worked as a general manager at Universal Air Products between October 2009 and February 2021. His various roles at the company include streamlining sales operations and training the sales force, coordinating with overseas ASU supplier, working on expanding the existing business, working on on-site plant proposals for mid-size integrated steel plant. Before Universal Air Products, he has worked for air product and chemical inclusion as uh, the marketing manager in Karnataka, Kerala and Goa. Before that, uh, he worked with companies such as Praxair India and Estate Aesthetic Group in various positions. So welcome, Mr. Shyam. So I would like to first uh, start uh, with more on the market side. So my question to you is, how big is the oxygen market in India? Who are the main customers and end users, if you could just explain that, which are the industries that consume industrial oxygen the most, and what would be the quantum of consumptions uh, in India so far? Yeah. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, 
see the total uh, uh, availability of oxygen uh, in the country is very difficult to estimate because there are huge capacities uh, established by people like reliance for their own internal use but going by the uh, merchant market there are two categories one is merchant market which means that these companies sell products directly to the market then there are on site plants which manufacture for the company in which they are located and sell the excess production and totally uh, dedicated plants uh, like for example reliance has a very huge capacity but they do not sell it outside except under uh, circumstances like what is happening today so i would put the rough estimate of the uh, manufacturing capacity uh, 70000 tons uh, per day Uh, this includes uh, nitrogen gas also uh, nitrogen and argon i am talking about total asu production capacity and uh, when it comes to medical oxygen i mean uh, overall the uh, situation has changed drastically after the covid second wave has started first wave also there was problem but we, uh, there was no shortage as which is uh, existing now so there is a huge uh, shortage of oxygen Uh, and uh, i think this will continue and uh, uh, going by what is happening in other countries there may be a third wave i wish it doesn't happen but there is a possibility so as far as uh, uh, medical oxygen is concerned it is roughly around 20 to 40% of the production of the merchant market companies uh, depending on the area for example bangalore has a, la- a large uh, number of hospitals but re- remaining part of karnataka do not have such large uh, hospitals in fact bangalore is uh, has got a concentration of uh, fairly big hospitals and there is a lot of uh, uh, traffic from other countries uh, coming to bangalore for healthcare treatment and things like that so this is about uh, then uh, what is the other question mr hello uh, sir about the uh, players so who are the players right now uh, manufacturing oxygen and who could be the end user which industries use this uh, oxygen generally See, manufacturers uh, today uh, linde and praxair have joined uh, and that that is the biggest company i would put it as today in, in terms of capacity in the merchant market then the second comes inox air products and uh, in third position there are maybe some smaller uh, players uh, there are two uh, this fragmented the market uh, the uh, merchant market this thing is fragmented into small companies having 40 tons per day plant to 200 tons 250 tons so linde praxair combination is number one second is inox air products and third is all the small uh, companies that's okay then other other question is uh, yeah so this answers your first question yes sir and uh... Uh, the next question so the uh, i have one more question uh, uh, on the answer that you gave so when you say merchant market uh, what exactly it is and uh, is it a type of segmentation that you are trying to make that merchant market is one segment and then uh, medical market is another segment or uh, uh, how it is yeah uh, merchant market is a segment <coughs> comprising of companies which have plants which uh, cater to the market directly and uh, not see for example uh, a company like linde praxair combination is not only merchant they also have a lot of on site plants but there they get uh, 10 to 15% as liquid product and that is sold by them in the market so merchant market generally means that those who manufacture and give to market directly captive plant means i have a plant inside a steel plant and uh, whatever liquid production is which is in excess of the requirement of the single customer is uh, sold in the market this is called uh, uh, so merchant market is a segment in the merchant market liquid oxygen commercial liquid medical oxygen and argon all all the three products are manufactured and sold okay fine fine understood so sir i understood that you have divided the market in two forms one is merchant market and the other one is on site plant which is captive plant so okay. if in terms of uh, rough percentage how much of it total market would be merchant and how much would be on site mm, i think uh, there is no accurate uh, uh, data available but i can put it as 
merchant market uh, must be around 25000 tons per day and the remaining 50 roughly 45 50 tons is uh, uh, on site consumption so roughly it's a guesstimate of around 33 to 66% and yeah, i yeah. also assume that the merchant market caters to the uh, uh, demand in hospitals rather than the uh, on site plant because on site would be more for internal consumption of the company itself no merchant markets uh, do cater directly to the market but uh, even on sites will have an uh, see a x company will have a on site plant in a steel plant say they will have an agreement uh, to sell the excess liquid and that's quite sizable it is not small uh, in fact probably the on site plants which are allowed to sell in the market the quantity is more than the merchant markets uh, stand alone plants so it's a considerable quantity okay I understood the point. So, which means that uh, on-site plants, despite catering to the on-site requirement, also sell it outside. You are right. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. And sir, in terms of the uh, consum- industrial consumption, which industries would be uh, the biggest consumer of oxygen? I would put uh, steel industry as the major consumer of oxygen. Then there are uh, chemical plants. Uh, ref- ref- uh, oxygen refineries also require a lot of gases but may not be oxygen it may be mainly nitrogen so oxygen consumption ma- major quantity goes to steel plants then uh, many uh, say arc furnaces and induction furnace plants and then fabrication uh, ship building uh, like that you know there is the the uh, the application is very wide uh, usage of oxygen is quite uh, Uh, wide uh, this thing, so uh, I would put steel plants as the major consumers of oxygen. Your voice is not audible because you are on mute. Your voice is not audible. Yes, please uh- repeat. yeah so what i'm saying is i've seen a few other industries might be they cater to the smaller requirements of oxygen like chemical processing pulp and paper glass metal fabrication and textiles also uh, you know consuming some oxygen so uh, uh, thank you for your inputs so uh, 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 one, one small yes. thing see the yes, use sir. of oxygen in cement industry is all nascent you know it is a, a new application started maybe 7 8 years ago so i don't know what is the volume uh, in fact uh, in my earlier company we tried uh, using oxygen in a cement plant but it did not uh, work out and uh, the project was abandoned but i do not know now because that was a very big company for which i was working now this company where i work is a very small company i would say so new applications have come in and will keep coming fine sir so thanks for your inputs on uh, giving a, a brief insight about the market about the end users about the segmentation of the market and how it goes on uh, yeah. i would like to now uh, uh, i'll come back to you with another question but uh, before that i would like to move to the other speaker mr manender j chauhan so uh, before asking a question i would like to uh, give his introduction uh, so mr chauhan uh, has 25 plus of plus years of experience in oxygen plant commissioning maintenance and operation uh, mr chauhan is the unit head of universal boshi at bhiwadi rajasthan his roles and responsibilities at universal boshi includes installation commissioning and operations of fully automatic liquid oxygen nitrogen plants dp testing of uh, process filters and vessels study of uh, process requirements and analysis of machine functions during cryogenic distillation and more uh, before universal boshi he worked with jindal steel as operations and uh, maintenance uh, manager between 2008 and 19 2019 uh, before that he has worked with several other companies such as bushin power and steel inox air products uh, kaviraj air products etc in various locations so um, good morning and welcome to you sir so uh, yeah so my question to you uh, would following is uh, i would like to know from you what are the different principles of oxygen manufacturing what are the different methodologies that we adopt uh, what are the raw materials required 
and uh, might be a bit on transportation because i see a lot of uh, issues and uh, uh, popping up in the last uh, 15 20 days specifically on packaging and transportation or uh, uh, of oxygen so i would like uh, you to just guide, uh, to give throw some light on Uh, the methodology of transportation that is generally used uh, in this so uh, again i'll repeat the question so on principles of oxygen how is oxygen manufactured uh, what are the raw materials required and uh, how it is transported over to you sir ah uh, good morning to all so there is three method of production of oxygen morning sir good morning three method of production of oxygen first is the electrolysis process second is A cryogenic process and third is non-cryogenic process. This is also also called PSA or VPSA plant. First is electro electrolysis process. Here, it, uh, water is split up into oxygen and hydrogen, and it is a very old method and it is also very costly. Presently, this method is not used this time. Second one is ASU, air separation unit or cryogenic process. Uh, this is uh, this one is used normally a day. In in uh, from this uh, raw material is air only. Air is cooled up to liquid level, oxygen liquid level, and separated oxygen and not in oxygen and not oxygen. हेलो हाँ थर्ड वन इज नॉन क्राइमिक जैसे बीपीएसए और पीएसए प्लांट दिस वन इज दिस वन दिस प्लांट इज इजी टू इंस्टॉल बट प्रियोरिटी इज नाइन्टी टू टू नाइन्टी फाइव दिस इज नाउ इन हॉस्पिटल्स दिस वन इज इंस्टॉलिंग इंस्टॉलेशन इज फास्ट so this time bpsa plant is installing on oxygen um, hospital firstly ah hello ha ah. second question is to transportation of uh, oxygen gas Normally, liquid liquid transport in ASU product, that is cryogenic type production. Liquid oxygen is produced. It is transportation and transported uh, through tanker from anywhere. In, and in BPSA plant, it cannot be transported. It is installed only in hospital. And second method of transportation is in cylinders. Uh, sorry to disturb you, sir. Uh, uh, few of the people, few of the listeners are are not uh, finding your voice very clear. So, if you could uh, come closer to uh, the mic, it would be okay. Uh, better. Okay. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, can I speak in Hindi? Yes, sir. Please, please go. Ah, okay. Sir, ah, a first, one first method is the oxygen production. Got three method. First is the electrolyte. Uh, uh, इलेक्ट्रोलाइसिस प्रोसेस इसमें हाइड्रोजन और ऑक्सीजन बाटल को क्रैक करके बनाया जाता है तो ओ ओ मेथड बहुत पुराना हो गया है बहुत कॉस्टली है इसके लिए आज के डेट में उसको यूज नहीं कर पा रहे हैं सेकंड एस यू है एयर सेपरेशन यूनिट जिसमें एयर को हम लिक्विडिफाइड करते हैं और नाइट्रोजन ऑक्सीजन और आर्गन तीनों स्टेज में सेपरेट करते हैं हाँ इसमें इसकी इसकी प्यूरिटी मतलब ए एस यू की प्यूरिटी बहुत अच्छी होती है इसमें लिक्विड प्रोडक्शन है लिक्विड ऑक्सीजन और नाइट्रोजन दोनों का प्रोडक्शन होता है तो इसको ट्रांसपोर्ट करना लिक्विड फेज में कहीं भी इजी है और थर्ड है बीपीएसए या पीएसए प्लांट जो कि ऑन साइट जहां जरूरत है वहां बिठाना बिठा सकते हैं लेकिन इसकी प्यूरिटी जो है नाइन्टी से नाइन्टी के बीच में इसका यह है प्यूरिटी नाइन्टी टू नाइन्टी फाइव है ये केवल स्पेशल केस जैसे ब्लास्ट फॉर्नेस या मेडिकल ऑक्सीजन के लिए यूज कर सकते हैं इस इंडस्ट्रियल के लिए यूज नहीं हो सकता ये कटिंग और स्टील प्लांट ये सब के लिए यूज नहीं हो सकता है केवल उसमें ब्लास्ट फॉर्नेस में यूज कर सकते हैं इसको
Uh, okay, thank you, sir. So uh, uh, I will just conclude from what you said. So uh, there are three ways. Uh, first way is uh, uh, S two or water. Yeah, electrolysis of water, which is a very old way. It is very costly and not very effective. The second way is uh, again through oxygen. Uh, no, through air. So air is a raw material, and then you try to liquefy it uh, and. Th uh, and third one is again uh, from air but for industrial application is what you said correct for medical application for medical application third one is for medical application this third one for medical application only yeah sir you are uh, you are on mute i think your voice is not clear manindra sir आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही थर्ड वन इज यूज ओनली फॉर ब्लास्ट फर्नेस एंड मेडिकल प्लांट ओके तो ब्लास्ट फर्नेस एंड मेडिकल प्लांट के लिए जो ऑक्सीजन की जरूरत होती है इज इट मोर प्योरिटी दैट इज रिक्वायर्ड और इज इट लेस प्योरिटी आपकी आवाज चली गई सर इज म्यूटेड म्यूट में चले गए शायद सर मनिंदर सर हेलो हाँ बाकी जो इंडस्ट्रियल यूज के लिए कटिंग और स्टील प्लांट के लिए यूज के लिए होती है उसके लिए प्योरिटी मिनिमम 99.5 चाहिए ओके तो उसके लिए ए ही यूज करना है ओके हेलो हाँ सर बताइए बताइए हाँ तो ए प्लांट यूज करके उसमें क्या ए में दूसरी बात क्या लिक्विड का प्रोडक्शन हो सकता है तो लिक्विड कहीं भी लिक्विड नाइट्रोजन और ऑक्सीजन दोनों का प्रोडक्शन है आर्गन का भी है तो उसको कहीं भी इजीली ट्रांसपोर्ट कर सकते हैं थ्रू टैंकर ओके फाइन फाइन तो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन मेरा आपसे यह है कि जब हम एयर को एज अ रॉ मटेरियल यूज करते हैं तो क्या ये जरूरी है कि अगर हम ऑक्सीजन प्रोड्यूस कर रहे हैं तो ऑब्वियसली नाइट्रोजन भी प्रोड्यूस करेंगे बिकॉज दैट इज ऑल्सो बाई प्रोडक्ट और आर्गन नाइट्रोजन बाई प्रोडक्ट ओके ओके विच मीन दैट अगर हम आ, आ, दो जो आपने वो मेथड्स बताई उन दोनों को यूज करते हैं जो पीएसए और दूसरी वाली मेथड की तो उसमें उसमें केवल सिंगल प्रोडक्ट है उसमें ओनली सिंगल प्रोडक्ट है एसयू में थ्री अगर बड़ा प्लांट है तो आर्गन भी निकल सकता है ऑक्सीजन नाइट्रोजन छोटे प्लांटों में निकल जाता है लेकिन वी कैन प्रोड्यूस ऑक्सीजन नाइट्रोजन या स्मॉल प्लांट बट आर्गन इन इज इन बिग प्लांट ऑनली ओके ओके तो नाइट्रोजन का इंडस्ट्रियल यूज सर नाइट्रोजन का इंडस्ट्रियल बहुत ज्यादा है okay. मतलब एक तो ब्लास्ट में लगता है स्टील प्लांट में दूसरा फूड इंडस्ट्री में आज के डेट में बहुत ज्यादा यूज हो रहा है ओके वी कैन यूज इन फूड इंडस्ट्री जितने भी जो चिप्स के पैकेट वगैरह होते हैं उसके जो हवा भरी होती है वो नाइट्रोजन होती है okay. तीसरा जो हॉस्पिटल में यूज है okay. जो अस्पर्म और वैक्सीन को रखने के लिए सेव सेव करने के लिए लिक्विड नाइट्रोजन का यूज है लिक्विड नाइट्रोजन इन हॉस्पिटल इनपुट दैट आई वॉन्टेड फ्रॉम यू आई अगेन कम बैक टू यू विद अनदर क्वेश्चन सो बिफोर दैट आई वॉन्ट टू मूव टू द अनदर स्पीकर मिस्टर प्रभात कुमार सिन्हा सो बिफोर आस्किंग अ क्वेश्चन आई वुड लाइक टू गिव हिज इंट्रोडक्शन so mr uh, prabhat sinha is has 40 plus years of experience in the mining and metal industry he is skilled in engineering business development project engineering commissioning and pipelines mr prabhat sinha worked as a lecturer in mechanical engineering department in bhagalpur between 1976 to 79 later he joined as a management trainee in sale bokaro steel plant uh, in 1979 currently he is working as a consultant at oxygen plant esl bokaro his area of expertise includes commissioning and troubleshooting of small uh, and tonnage oxygen plants along with safety aspects smp and sop of oxygen plants so welcome sir so uh, i would like to ask a question uh, from you uh, 
regarding to setting up of oxygen plants so first of all uh, i would like you to categorize because you are saying that uh, you have worked in a smaller size of uh, production oxygen production plant so i would like to know in terms of small large and uh, you know uh, medium what is the, how do you define uh, that category of oxygen plant first and second question that i wanted to ask is uh, what are the challenges that a company generally faces in setting up and running of a small oxygen plant yes good morning everybody am i audible yes sir am i audible yes sir yeah okay. no, good morning good morning everybody so thanks mr nural for hosting such a lovely session this is the demand of the day for the nation also and you have a specific queries like size of plant and the challenges so so far the size of the plant is concerned as mr batkal also said that uh, it depends upon the requirement of the plant there may be uh, vpsa plant psa plant for the small size plants required for hospitals and then the tunnel oxygen plants that is required for industrial uses as well as it caters to the medical demand also so that depends upon the requirement so these are the sizes of the plants so it may vary for tunnel oxygen plant it's if it is 100 tons and more then uh, we will have to go uh, for the cryogenic process also that is the the more common for the last 100 years so for that that is the cryogenic distillation with the help of distillation columns there are the raw material and all that that is air and the more important thing is the power matlab whatever input is there power is most important factor in production of oxygen so far as tunnel oxygen plant is concerned for small plants power requirement is less but for tunnels you must have sufficient power because there are air compressors there are oxygen compressors booster air compressors so that needs lot of power so accordingly the selection of plant that is to be done uh, and the investment because there should be proper protection of this allow yes please yes please Am I audible? Yes, sir, audible? Please go ahead. Yes, yes, sir, yes, please. So that is the size of the plant. So that depends upon the requirement. As if it is for the hospitals, that is the VSPA or PSA plant. But even PSA plant is there. That is cost effective. If it is for only for blast of furnace oxygen enrichment, because Uh, there was a proposal in bokaru steel earlier uh, when uh, blast furnace oxygen enrichment was more uh, so in that case there was a proposal to go for uh, uh, this uh, this plant of psa so that even less purity of oxygen uh, will be sufficient for enrichment in blast furnaces but uh, in the steel plants you know steel making is more important so we had a dual role we had to make produce steel also as well as we have to boost up the uh, i mean productivity of blast furnaces also so in that case later on we decided to go for uh, this cryogenic plant for high purity of oxygen that is 99.5% pure that is required for the converters and then a part of that oxygen goes for enrichment in blast furnaces so accordingly such plants are there in bokaru steel uh, uh, we have 550 tpd three units and then one bu plant from minox that is 1250 tpd so that is one question uh, mr manral that is size of the plant okay yes then the, then the second question is challenges so, so far as challenges are concerned for smaller plants less area is required but uh, because you know around 551 psa plants 
are to come from PM, PM Cares Fund so that each district has one PSA plan to cater to the demands of the hospitals. So for that also, there are, you know, uh, maybe some uh, bureaucratic failure or anything so that the clearance of the files and all that, that is also there. So, so that is why uh, only 33 plants out of 162 or 152 have, have come. And more plants are to come in course of time. Because uh, this production of this PSA oxygen is very cheap in comparison with buying cylinders from the market. And you will get a break even in a period of only 18 months if you go for a PSA plant that may be costing around one crore or something like that, depending upon the size. And that way, very easily you can get the break even with a PSA plant if it is set up in the hospitals. But buying cylinders, that is very costly. Industrial cylinders or medical cylinders, that is very costly. Then for the tonnage oxygen plant. Tonnage oxygen plants has uh, many challenges. The first challenge is area. Say, uh, our Wu plant that needed around 60 acres of land. Then captive plant that again is in 20 to 25 acres. So, land acquisition is an issue. Whenever you go for setting up a tonnage oxygen plant, you need more area. So, the land acquisition is there. And in addition to that, you have to see that you have sufficient power in that region. Power, water flow, and all these things. Uh, I mean, rear, uh, nearby, you must have some canals from the rivers so that because oxygen, uh, for oxygen plant, water consumption is very high. Power consumption is very high. Of course, air is raw material. But the real raw material is power. Without power, uh, you cannot pr produce oxygen from uh, air separation. Say for the boo plant, it is producing 1100 TPD and it consumes around 29 megawatt. And for 450 TPD in Bokaro steel, it is consuming 16 megawatt. And if it has to start another unit, so it will again consume 18 megawatt. So the power consumption is very high. These are the challenges. So you will have to see everything before going for tonnage oxygen plants. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Uh, very clear and uh, very informative uh, also. So these are the constants for tonnage and size of the uh, smaller plants. So because uh, for tonnage oxygen plants, I, I would just like to brief because you have given me that how that the technology changes have taken place in course of time. Okay. For tonnage oxygen plants, Right in 1972 to 78, there were plants regenerator based. Regenerator based means yes, stainless steel regenerators were there, filled with basalt stone chips to arrest moisture, CO2, and dust. And then uh, copper pipelines and all that. There was USSR make, it was 450 TPD. So later on, and the valve operation that was being done with help of switching over mechanism. Whatever is doing it is being done by PLC nowadays. That was being done with switching over mechanism. Later on, two plants of air leaky and one plant that came from BSPVL. Again, that was a 550 TPD. So these plants first had RHE based plants, reversible heat exchangers. But again, there was issues of uh, RHE-based plants were all, was also not uh, so safe. I mean, uh, there was excess of oxygen, nitrogen, I mean impurities. There was excess in RHEs, so that reverse blast was required because that is the in inbuilt process also that waste nitrogen cleans that path. 
and then later on came ppus the ppu plants are the latest one so the ppu plants have dryers after you compress air from air compressor that is going to scrubbers nitrogen scrubbers or air scrubbers where air is cooled down to a temperature of 12 degree centigrade and that air is fed to the dryers these dryers have alumina in molecular sieve beds so therefrom you get air at a dew point of minus uh, 65 degrees celsius and at a less temperature and then it is fed to the rectification column and of course with the help of turbo expanders and booster compressors so this helps in producing oxygen from ppu so again there was a problem that whatever oxygen we are producing you again needed uh, oxygen compressors so that it, that consumes lot of power and the safety concern was also there because uh, nowadays uh, uh, we are going for liquid oxygen pump with the ppu plants so that it takes liquid directly from the column and then it is pumped and su supplied to the consumers so there the cost of production is quite less so this is the latest one uh, uh, the process for oxygen production from asu so in time uh, the process has been i mean simplified and it has been more effective and economical so that uh, safety is also an important aspect you know oxygen compressors maintenance of oxygen compressors has been rather lot of precision and safety requirement is there though uh, I have done many capital repair of oxygen compressors, but there has been record of Russian oxygen compressors when these compressors were blown due to any uh, technical or precision snag. We had oxygen compressors in Bokaro uh, Steel. Uh, still, we are having and we are compressing oxygen. KTK 12.5 of the 35 that is USSR make, then one from Sulger and then one from CKD and then of course in electro steel also there was a compressor from Chinese compressor and that was around 25,000 meter cube per hour. So you can compress a lot of gas with the help of oxygen compressors but the very question is the maintenance skill that is very important in maintenance of oxygen compressors but uh, once you are tapping liquid from the column and you are pumping with the help of liquid oxygen pump. There, the cost of production is less and it is safe also. That is there in INOX plant in Bokaro Steel. That is on B basis, O basis, 1250 TPD. Am I clear, Mr. Mundral? Yes, sir. Thanks for your input. So, I understood uh, from uh, your point of view. Uh, uh, I have one question uh, which I wanted to ask is uh, you spoke about uh, plants that were uh, or equipments that were bought from outside. Is it the case still now? Do we need to import equipments to set up a plant? And uh, in terms of technology, where are we? Do we have the technology to manufacture uh, oxygen or uh, it's it's still uh, outside and then uh, latest technologies are still uh, support is required from outside to set up a plant? Smaller size so, plants. Mishnika, I would also like to comment on this. Yes, please. Yes, sir, please. Yeah. After Mr. Sina, I would like to comment on this. Okay, sure. Yes, sure. please. Sure, sir. I'll ask the same question from you after Mr. Sina replies. Sina, sir, you can continue. Yes, what was your query? So the query was related to uh, dependence on international uh, technologies and equipment right. for setting up the plant. Yes, yes. So, so far as the smaller size plants are concerned, that is the VPSA or PSA. So these plants are uh, indigenously available. There are small players also, they are supplying these small size plants. But so far as the tonnage oxygen plant is concerned, uh, we will we have to depend upon uh, international suppliers 
so far as heat heat exchangers are concerned so in india there is a, a there is no player who can produce braised aluminum heat exchangers so there are elpama members in the international market where from we are buying uh el braised aluminum heat exchangers like sumitomo linde uh trane and all all this uh, they are they are supplying uh, heat exchangers these are braised aluminum heat exchangers uh, with aluminum plates and fins Uh, so that there is uh, heat and cold transfer between air and the whatever products that is coming out so for that we have to depend upon international market then comes uh, your uh, turbo expanders air compressors oxygen compressors and booster compressors uh, in air compressors uh, we are uh, we can uh, get from demag we can get from cgd there also those compressors we are getting because these compressors are of the capacity of 1 lakh 25000 meter cube per hour now so such set of uh, compressors you need to import from outside and even oxygen compressors also from ussr or from silger or from cgd so and uh, then uh, of course uh, other materials uh, raw materials uh, you are getting in india also say that for dryers you need molecular molecular sieve and alumina that is uh, indigenously available the pipelines you can get and all that uh, but uh, certain equipments you will have to depend so bspvl was earlier uh, fabricating uh, some equipments of the sort and uh, and of course uh, maybe some small piece might have come up for pipelines and all that but uh, major equipments you need to import from outside yes please mr munral yeah so thanks for your input uh, uh, there is a question Sorry. what uh, which which country is ckd ckd is uh, check check us yes okay. Okay. CKD compressor is there in Bokaru Steel. One air compressor and one oxygen compressor also. Perfect. So uh, that is of around fifteen thousand meter cube per hour of gaseous oxygen, and uh, air compressor of uh, more than one lakh dollar meter cube per hour. Then of course this pre cooling in unit and all that that you can uh, get here. Then um, uh, dryer unit that also you can uh, fabricate over here. Uh, even uh, buffer oxygen vessels these you can get here then liquid oxygen pumps earlier it was cry star uh, but now that cry pump asia in delhi they are making uh, oxygen that is for cylinder filling liquid oxygen pumps they are making suddenly we are going uh, day by day we are trying to develop our own technology but still more is required here yes please Fine, sir. Fine. Thanks. So, uh, Mr. Shami wanted to add something. Uh, another aspect is that safety. Whatever we are discussing, uh, of course, uh, safety is a uh, very important aspect in oxygen plant. You know, a uh, lot of technical skill and managerial skill is required when you are going for. setting up the plant and once you are going out for the operation of the plant because uh, so many constraints are there especially the decreasing agent that is trichloroethylene earlier it was carbon tetrachloride but now it is trichloroethylene with these we used to decrease the pipelines walls and uh, other equipments then uh, other safety aspect that is transportation of oxygen as you were saying that the oxygen uh, can be transported in locks and in cylinders also but uh, you know once you supply from the carbon steel pipelines there also there is a velocity restriction in gaseous oxygen the velocity must not go beyond 10 meters per second otherwise 
uh, you will have to use some non-ferrous material in the pipeline for the safety. Whatever happened, you must have been remembering in Voyager steel plant. In oxygen PRS, there was an explosion. So there, some adjustment in that oxygen PRS wall. So unnecessary fingering or uh, entry of any foreign material or any hydrocarbon or anything of that explosive material that becomes very dangerous. So if uh, the oxygen plant personnel right from a khalasi to DGM or GM, everybody is trained that once you are handling any oxygen plant, pipeline, walls or anything, so strictly you have to follow these safety norms. And you have to be honest that if something falls down, say, in the vessel or in the pipeline, we will not say you anything, but you have to clearly spell it out. Yes, sir, this has happened. And then we will take necessary precautions because one failure can lead to chaos. So the safety point is very important. And of course, that liquid oxygen, whenever there is a liquid oxygen flow is there, there should be safety valve provision. So that because, you know, the trapped liquid oxygen has a tremendous volumetric expansion and that can damage the pipeline. Okay, so, sir, they, thanks for your <laughs> inputs. There is yes. uh, one uh, more question uh, which I would like to ask uh, from uh, the mm, listener's point of view. And that is, uh, you had said that uh, it requires around, for a PSA, smallest PSA plant, it requires around 1 crore of investment and around 18 months of uh, break-even time to go ahead. But to start up from scratch, how much time it will take to set up the plant? Uh, that is the question. So, uh, for setting up a smallest plant, what would be the, uh, you know, uh, timelines we should associate uh, in normal times and now uh, specifically in this uh, uh, unusual time? How What would be the timelines? And then that one crore plant, what would be the approximate capacity that uh, somebody uh, can uh, obtain by investing that one crore? Actually, that is for hospital requirement. Uh, that is a small requirement for hospitals and all that. Because uh, as I told you that uh, from PM Cares Fund, that PSA plant has to come. And uh, and then uh, these small plants have to come as early po as uh, possible. And there the purity is also uh, 90 to 95 percent only. High purity of oxygen is not required. So in that case, uh, uh, smaller plants, uh, smaller plants can be set up. Uh, that is the ordering of the materials. But how much time does uh, will it take, sir? How much time yes. from starting to say setting up a plant, uh, start of production? In in, a, in, say in a year or eighteen months, you can start production. Okay, in a year or eighteen months, we can start the production. Can start production. Okay. Okay. But then we have been uh, the hearing recently of late about uh, plants coming up in say 10 days or even you know smaller than that. Uh, I just saw news on some uh, dairy plant which was where they started uh, manufacturing oxygen in seven days. So how is uh, this possible and how are how is uh, yeah, how are yeah, yes, I, I got your point. That is a skin mounted plant. You know uh, that is a small plant uh, with all the equipment. Say small compressor is there. Uh, the filtration unit is there, the dryer is there, the regeneration unit is there, and then a small buffer is there. So that is skin mounted plant. I mean, that is ordered and that is made. You simply get it, install it, and then connect with the power source. You connect with the pipelines and buffer. Say that oxygen has been produced. Uh, so there are two ways of supplying to the hospitals. First is you may fill in the cylinders. Then again, there is a provision that you can supply oxygen, uh, you can store in a storage vessel. And whenever there is disruption from the cylinders, you can meet from uh, the oxygen vessel also. So that can, that can be supplied to the hospital. So these are, these are for uh, hospital requirement, only the cylinder requirements. I mean, there are these small size plants are uh, ready and you can install there. So, sir, such a plant, how much capacity uh, or how much uh, uh, production that uh, it can do? 
in say one hour or one day such a small plant which is which can come up with 70 skin plant as you said uh, so how much time uh, how much capacity it would uh, be catering to there this uh, capacity is uh, very less uh, say i would just uh, give you an example that for uh, uh say there is a 240 bed hospital with 40 icus so it uses oxygen worth about rupees 5 lakh per month normal times and rupees 50 lakh is required to set up psa plant with the re requisite capacity in uh, one month and break even is 18 months so 24 cylinders worth of gas per day cost around 30 rupees the uh, uh, 33 lakhs so each cylinder say of 5.8 meter cube and uh, uh, you have to fill per day so that is 33 lakhs so there are that there it depends uh, what type of plant you need uh, uh, and what is your demand say 162 plants will boost up capacity to 155 million ton of oxygen so these have these has been ordered under pm cares fund so these plants are to come in course of time because there were bids for 150 psa of the plants only 33 are up and rest are not clear and for 162 psa plants 201.58 crores that is required so it depends on what is your demand what type of plant you need what is your say is it for your cylinder filling is it for your hospital requirement that you have icu ibu and all that so you will have to assess the requirement and accordingly you select the plant so these are small plants you can get it here in india and you can use it there Uh, fine sir so thanks so i'll go to the next speaker uh, mr sham if you are there i would like to ask you a question on uh, sir are you there yeah yeah i am here yes, sir. sir so i would like to ask from you for the smaller plant that mr sinha explained so what could be the profitability or uh, gross profit margin or net profit margin of such a plant in general yeah i i would like to uh, add little more details to what mr sinha said <clears throat> there are uh, four five uh, alternatives available for home care for a single patient at home there are oxygen concentrators which are of 5 liters per minute flow which cost from 25 30000 to 60000 depending on the uh, reputed uh, reputation of the manufacturer so then the same psa plant uh, bigger plants of 15000 liters per minute are available for mid size hospital so uh, that is one category then there is one category which we have all, all of us have uh, forgotten to raising there are plants capable of making only gas oxygen no liquid they are of 25 cylinders per hour 50 cylinders per hour 75 cylinders per hour i mean it are available but these have become uh, outdated because of the larger uh, liquid medical liquid plants coming in the market the reason being the power consumption in uh, gas oxygen plants with very little nitrogen and practically no argon uh, the power consumption is 1.7 1.8 even it goes to two units of power per cubic meter of oxygen so these plants are also available they are the Uh, without cylinders, without land and building, the cost will be around one 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 crore. You can uh, fill about thirty cylinders per hour, and uh, that is one category which we have uh, this thing. Then there are one forty cubic meter per hour plant I was mentioning. Then two hundred, three hundred cubic, five hundred cubic meter per hour plants are available, and uh, um, Universal Bosch makes uh, these uh, gas plants about which we could not discuss. These are the two things uh, this thing, and then uh, after this, there are uh, liquid medical oxygen plants of starting from twenty-five tons per day to five uh, thousand tons per day also. So uh, for merchant market, uh, what uh, we had uh, we have in Universal is forty TPD plant, and then we have gone in for a hundred TPD plant, uh, which is uh, arrived in uh, <coughs> in in the country and is in the site. so uh, these are again uh, power consumption is around 1 uh, 
same thing with the uh, 800 or 1000 tpd plant power consumption drops down to 0.7 and 2500 tpd praxair plant in uh, jsw it goes up to 0.58 units so power consumption per cubic meter comes down drastically so these are the options available <coughs> the first two options that home care then mid size hospital psa vpsa and uh, the, uh, what you read uh, that 10 days it was commissioned it is only the startup but the supplier manufacturer may have taken 2 3 4 months to, for manufacturing all the components and when it came to the hospital it has taken 7 days to commission it it is not that the plant itself was commissioned in 7 days so these are the options available i'm sorry i i am gone away from your question so i hope things are clear people can go for a gas oxygen plant where suppose there is an area where large companies like linde inox are not there and uh, the place is far off from the nearest liquid plant you can go for a oxygen gas plant up to 100 meter cube per hour the um, cost will be less as i was mentioning it may be about 1 crore for a uh, 140 cube per hour plant excluding land building and uh, other uh, this thing yeah please continue with your question mr vikas uh, fine sir thanks so my next question is uh, to mr maninda yes. uh, what would what are the licenses and approvals uh, required for setting up uh, a small plant say uh, for to, uh, a psa plant for catering around 200 cylinders per day what could be Sir, the uh, license uh, first, first i want to explain a small oxygen plant ac plant uh-huh. which are 1150 meter cube 100 meter cube 130 meter cube fine so normally cost of a skid mounted 50 meter cube plant is this time 1.5 to 2 crore in Russell Bossy. I am in Russell Bossy. As he is saying, Mr. Sunder, uh, and its its time period for commissioning is maximum 15 days after reaching the machinery. Okay. Okay. You can fill 200 cylinder per day of 40 liter. From 50 meter cube plant, and 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 for license is uh, for ASU plant cylinder uh, mainly license is to trading license, factory license, and extra it to from explosive as to filling of cylinder and a storage of cylinder because both have high pressure. This we this two license is from explosive department. But in PSA plant, you are not required to take license from explosive department because this is not high pressure. Because it will directly supply on seven bar. Fine. So, sir, which uh, licenses are such that you have to apply once and which licenses are such that you have to yearly renewal? Sir, look, explosive license yearly. If you take an ASU plant, which is a cylinder filling plant, you have to take a yearly renewal here. एक्सप्लोइ लाइसेंस बाकी जो फैक्ट्री लाइसेंस और ट्राइब लाइसेंस होता है वो नॉर्मल हर जगह लगता है ओके तो तीन लाइसेंसेस के बारे में आपने बात की करेक्ट हां हां तो तीन लाइसेंसेस की जरूरत है लाइसेंस होता है ट्रेडिंग के लिए और दूसरा एक सिलेंडर एक्सप्लोइ लाइसेंस दो होता है सिलेंडर फिलिंग और स्टोरेज के लिए ओके फाइन फाइन और सर ये छोटे प्लांट के बारे में बात कर रहे हैं बार-बार क्वेश्चन आ रहा है छोटे प्लांट अवेलेबल है 50 100 130 मतलब 200 सिलेंडर 500 500 सिलेंडर 800 सिलेंडर पर डे के रेट में अवेलेबल है और इजीली 15 डेज के अंदर इंस्टॉल हो सकते हैं करेक्ट तो ऐसे प्लांट में के लिए कितना इन्वेस्टमेंट की जरूरत पड़ती है इन्वेस्टमेंट यार देखिए सर प्लांट कॉस्ट जो है प्लांट कॉस्ट कई कई 50 मीटर क्यूब का 1.5 से 2 करोड़ आज के रेट में आ रहा है क्योंकि डिमांड ज्यादा होने की वजह से रेट बढ़ गया दूसरा 130 का 2.5 के आसपास आ रहा है करोड़ 130 मीटर क्यूब का जो कि 500 सिलेंडर पर डे भर सकता है और क्वेश्चन आ रहा था बीच में कि एसयू प्लांट में इंडस्ट्रियल और मेडिकल हम दोनों यूज कर सकते हैं ठीक है और सर लैंड की बात है 50 मीटर क्यूब में 35 मीटर इंटू ट्वेंटी मीटर लैंड की जरूरत है केवल प्लांट एरिया ओके और उससे 100 मीटर क्यूब हंड्रेड से टू के लिए फिफ्टी इंटू मीटर लैंड की जरूरत है ओके बस मेडिकल ऑक्सीजन के लिए इतना 200 तक बहुत सफिशिएंट है ओके ओके 
और गवर्नमेंट सब्सिडीज कुछ हैं जो गवर्नमेंट हाँ अभी अभी सुनने में आया कि राजस्थान गवर्नमेंट फिफ्टी लाख सब्सिडी दे रही है लेकिन वो जिस स्टेट का अलग अलग स्टेट का मैटर है ओके ठीक है थैंक्स आपने कुछ अच्छे इनपुट्स दिए जो कि मेरे ख्याल से छोटे प्लांट के बारे छोटे प्लांट के बारे में पूरा डिटेल ले सकते हैं क्योंकि ऑलरेडी हम मैन्युफैक्चर करते हैं सेल करते हैं ठीक है तो आई थिंक मोस्ट ऑफ द क्वेश्चन दैट वर आस्ड इन द चैट बॉक्स हैव बीन आंसर्ड सो इफ देर आर एनी एडिशनल क्वेश्चन प्लीज कीप ऑन टाइपिंग बिकॉज दैट विल मेक द होल डिस्कशन मोर फ्रूटफुल Uh, next question i want to ask from mr shyam about the demand and might be other uh, uh, panelists other speakers can also add uh, it's about the demand which is coming up right now so is it something they see as something happening for few months or a year maximum or will it continue so uh, uh, please give your input uh, shyam sir on uh, the demand side of it so is it just uh, for some time that it is happening or it will it be persistent continuous and then you see a uh, long term requirement for industrial and medical oxygen the present demand is very very short lived i would say maybe as long as the uh, second wave uh, abets and uh, as far as uh, once the second wave is over the consumption will be expect uh, my guess is that it will continue to be on the higher side because there is lot of awareness among doctors patients regarding use of oxygen oxygen usage was in a hospital was considered as something very serious uh, patient only could get but probably uh, with the kind of things that are happening more oxygen will be used in coming days even after this the present pandemic is second wave is over but if there is a third wave which i hope again um, uh, it doesn't happen uh, then the demand will may continue but how long second wave lasts how long the third when the third wave will start and <clears throat> when the third wave will end all these things are not clear so i would say the present uh, unusually high requirement is temporary maybe 3 months 6 months Uh, then again, if when it comes back to normal, it will not go back to the or, uh, pre-pandemic uh, demand. It will be higher than the pre-pandemic de- demand. So this is the scenario as far as the uh, requirement of medical oxygen is concerned. And uh, because industries are not getting oxygen <coughs> uh, after the pandemic is over, then industrial consumption will again start and uh, stabilize. So this is the scenario. Uh, regarding the uh, requirement which is going to come okay fine sir so uh, so what do you think is it's it's uh, temporary and there's a sudden spurt of course in long term there is there could be an increase in industrial oxygen demand but uh, right now the scenario is that it it's a it's a spurt sudden spurt that uh, we are seeing uh, so right. the, yes sir. so then next question is again from uh, for you and which talks about the market price so what's the market price of oxygen does it fluctuate quite often on a daily basis or is it long term agreements that uh, uh, are signed between you know a industrial consumer or even a hospital a medical consumer and the, the manufacturer or uh, how much of it is regulated of course there is a, a control uh, on prices right now because of black marketing but in general in normal times uh, how much is the control from the government on these occasions yeah uh, most of the big consumers will have an agreement with the supplier because the other things involved not only supply uh, the companies give them the liquid oxygen tank storage tank vaporizer and help them to get the licenses and uh, so there is normally a 3 year to 5 year agreement and the agreement will contain um, price variation clauses b- depending on power depending on uh, uh, diesel cost if the locate uh, if the location is far from the manufacturing like that you know, three four price variation clauses are there so there is an agreement for all uh, major consumers and uh, in fact whatever prices government has fixed now are good good price i would say uh, maybe prior to one year there was huge surplus in the market 
so there is a dog eat dog competition about one one and a half years back two years back probably uh, then in the last before the first wave the things had even out meaning production and uh, de- demand and uh, supply was almost equal like so prices got stabilized but after the pandemic the prices have gone up uh, mainly due to fixation of the price by the government which uh, uh, most manufacturers have uh, uh, taken advantage of this is the scenario there is an agreement uh, with uh, all the major users okay fine sir fine thanks for your input so what i understand is there are long term agreements and prior to covid there was uh, you know huge competition and the prices were low but uh, due to uh, sudden spurt uh, of course there is a control from the government but even the prices uh, that the government has fixed are good prices yes very in fact i would say that has made the industry healthy right uh, fine fine so sir uh, in terms of uh, uh, rather i would like to ask uh, mr senha uh, uh, one question which has come uh, regarding air separation so they are saying what are the legal formalities required to set up uh, 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 air separation plant a small air separation plant what are the legal formalities that uh, one has to do uh, sinha sir the question is for you yes yes, yes. please yes sir am i clear am i audible yes sir yes sir yes sir so the uh, question is you have got yes i yes, have got a question uh, regarding yes, that uh, uh, setting up of a tonnage oxygen plant so for that uh, you know uh, the consultants are there for preparation of dpr that is detail project report that is say the mecon is there and other agencies that there so we give them our requirement that uh, this much of plant is required this of this capacity they make a detailed project report so for detailed project report uh, so many considerations are there that wherever we are going to set up a plant what is the nearby water source and the power source and uh, uh, then the safety requirement whatever is there so according to that area is uh, that is fixed then based on dpr uh, the different licenses are there say uh, cc nagpur controller of uh, explosives nagpur they are giving permissions for uh, say your oxygen filling cylinders pressure vessels uh then other cryogenic vessels then there are uh, uh, statutory requirements that, that is this the quality of oxygen say for if you are going for medical oxygen that you will have to con- con- contact this drug controller for quality of oxygen so in totality uh, mecon coordinates for preparation of dpr and of course with the help of uh, the buyer also so different licenses are uh, uh, taken and based on that uh, they set up everything there there where that uh, asu will be installed uh, where these pressure vessels will be required uh, how will be the orientation of these pressure vessels uh, then the pipelines required uh, the material selection for pipelines the material selection for this and of course the, the list of vendors are there from the international market and in the indigenous market so based on that dpr they made the complete detailed project report and proper licenses for for from all agencies cc nagpur uh, state government for land and all that and they sir you got muted in between so your mic is on mute prabha sena sir your mic is on mute yes please yes sir uh, the, you you it? It? yes sir please uh, go ahead that detail project report that is made by the consultants for tenage oxygen plant or asus say that as such that mecon is there so they are preparing preparing that detail project report say the site selection the site selection needs again that power source where from will you will get that power of 25 megawatt because you are not going to set up uh, one power plant uh, for oxygen plant 
and if if more power is required then you may have to go for power plant also and then water source what is the nearby source because water consumption is also quite quite high you need a cooling pond you need a canal to tap water where from the source is there so all these things are covered in detailed project report that is made by the consultants these consultants making the complete uh, detailed project report and accordingly that uh, cost is worked out and bidding is there and then in course of time that plant is set up so that detailed project report is required for tenders option plants okay fine uh thanks so uh, mr manika i would like to ask you so if i want to set up a plant what are the different steps uh, to move forward what what should be the you know uh, no, different yes, milestones yes, that yes, i should yes, yes, yes. so in one year what should be ha what should be happening select uh, you know uh, 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 area uh, select the for example machinery okay, okay, okay. by the machinery so what are the different milestones that i should keep for next uh, one year uh, for setting up a plant okay first you select the land yeah. there you want to install arrange the arrange cylinders first before starting the plant you start to arrange the cylinders to fill then you order the plant big time how many time the um, factory is taking to supply yes. the plant sir uh, i have a question uh, huh? how do from where do we get the cylinders who uh, from sir, a manufacturer in, or in there india or? in india one factory ekc everest counter cylinder is the main manufacturer in india okay so are they not facing any issues uh, right they, now they the are facing oh, okay they are also facing a lot of demand but okay. they main main supply is man manufacturing ekc okay everest counter cylinder okay fine fine So, are there some uh, smaller suppliers also who can uh, who uh, we can approach? And are uh, there are so many other cylinders like LPG or others? Can we use those cylinders for? Uh, no, no, cannot be used. In this is this is a high pressure cylinder, okay. and it is tested on two fifty. Okay. So you cannot use any other 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 cylinder. Okay. Okay. So, second question is: uh, Is is there a need for oxygen because of transportation, because of lack of uh, you know uh, oxygen, or is it lack of cylinders that is causing this uh, requirement? No, actually, transportation is two types. If if you purchase from big plant liquid oxygen, it is easy to transport anywhere in India or anywhere. But cylinder has a small quantity of gas. You can. Transport more cylinder, cylinder in a cylinder, a small quantity of gas in cylinders, only for <coughs> hospital or single use, a small usage. Okay, fine. May I interrupt, please? Yes, please. Yeah, that is uh, for transportation. That liquid oxygen tankers are much in use. because you know the cylinders are very costly you will have to fill it for cylinder also what happens you have to go for hydraulic testing of cylinder size mr chohan also said that if you fill it at 140 kg you will have to take uh, compress it uh, test it hydraulically at 210 kg per cm square necessary precautions are there for cylinder filling uh, drug license is required and all that so many things are required for oxygen filling stations for once you go for filling and because another option is that uh, whatever is we had set up one uh, uh, in built lox tank in bokaro general hospital so what happens uh, one liquid oxygen tank you have uh, set up and then uh, you have a pressure regulating valve uh, then that pipeline is connected to the intensive care unit Uh, ibu and other wards wherever you need oxygen and in that case what happens uh, once you fill uh, say a tank of around 15 to 16 uh, tons of a one tanker you fill it in the tank then uh, that will last say about uh, 10 days say 7 to 8 days or 10 days and from uh, from a regulating valve you can control that oxygen consumption to the patients but what happens uh, there, there should be some inbuilt safety provision 
also what happened in Nasif that uh, due to leakage in tank uh, for maintenance that entire oxygen supply was stopped. So what happens is uh, there is a backup provision with the cylinders also that once if you are going for maintenance of any type of maintenance in locks tank then you can uh, with the additional backup of oxygen cylinders you can supply to the patient so that there is no disruption of oxygen supply. You can uh, go from the oxygen ramp also. So additionally that is also there. So that facility is already there in Bukaro General Hospital. So, so this uh, tranker transportation is better and now it is because what, what, what happens the most of the steel plants or this oxygen plants in, in eastern India and if the requirement is there in the south so the cost of transportation is uh, time taking and, uh, and uh, cost also. That is why even four tankers were transported by rail as you might have seen from uh, Bukaro or from eastern India to cater to the demands of oxygen crisis. So uh, that is the one issue uh, that uh, locks is more help because once you go for cylinder filling, there are other statutory obligations also that you will have to take care for uh, cylinder filling. Well, the other things are there, hydraulic testing pumps are there, and then other drug license and all that. But uh, in locks tank, once you set up in the plant through PRS, there is uninterrupted supply of oxygen. Yes, please. So I would now request uh, all the listeners to please uh, type your questions. Uh, you can uh, ask a question to a particular speaker and also ask a question in general. So we will uh, put it to the uh, speakers and then uh, the, uh, they can answer the question. So there's a question for Mr. Maninda sir. Uh, you say, uh, so Oh, that's a very particular question. Please try to ask generic question uh, so that it is beneficial for everybody. So we can't answer the question that uh, if you have asked a, uh, asked a quotation from some company so the, or, or you want a contact, that can be done, might be a later on. So the question is, what is the cost of setting up a ASU? So actually setting up ASU, the different size, if you have a different size, it has different cost. अलग अलग साइज का अलग अलग कॉस्ट होता है इट डिपेंड करता है कि आपको रिक्वायरमेंट कितनी है और कितना ये कितने का प्लांट है अगर आप एग्जांपल दे दें कुछ छोटे हां दे रहा हूं 50 मीटर से 200 सिलेंडर पर डे का अप्रोक्सीमेट कॉस्ट जो है 1.5 करोड़ से 2 करोड़ अभी चल रहा है 130 500 500 सिलेंडर के लिए सही कई 3 3 करोड़ के आसपास रेट चल रहा है ये प्लांट का कॉस्ट है विद पूरा फुल सेटअप विदाउट सिलेंडर ठीक है तो 500 सिलेंडर 50 सिलेंडर का कितना और 200 के सिलेंडर 50 मीटर की 200 सिलेंडर नहीं 50 क्वेश्चन है 50 सिलेंडर्स के लिए कितना जो 50 एक्चुअली मिनिमम कैपेसिटी जो हमारे यहां है वो 200 सिलेंडर का है उससे छोटा नहीं है ओके लेकिन अगर कोई 50 का करना चाहता है तो कितना वो एसयू में तो मुश्किल up to cylinder filling. Hmm. So next question is from Prabhat sir uh, on the machineries. So uh, who are the companies we should connect for uh, buying machineries? Yes, uh, it depends upon uh, uh, what do you want. Say for air compressors, you need because uh, air is a raw material, and uh, you need uh, for air compressor that is. Uh, uh, Demag is there, Germany, then uh, your CKD, then Suljer. So these are, they are, these are four or five, then uh, your Crystar. These are the major players in air compressors. Okay. And uh, of course, these dryers and uh, that is a pre cooling unit. That after the air is compressed, you need a pre cooling unit that is. Uh, uh, nitrogen scrubber or air scrubber. So for that, uh, you can uh, fabricate it in indigenously. Uh, the raw materials are also available, uh, the packing rings, pipelines, halls and all that. For pre-cooling part, there is no problem. Then cooling tower also, cooling tower also you can get 
there are many sources paharpur and all that that uh, water is good because two types of water is required uh, one is your process water in uh, your scrubber and then another is chilled water because ultimately you want uh, 10 to 12 degrees uh, water te uh, air temperature after recoiling in it so for that you would uh, you use uh, air scrubber nitrogen scrubber then uh, water pumps all these things are indigenously available Fine. then what you need a chiller chiller that is to further cool water whatever water you are getting from nitrogen scrubber so that water is again cooled in refrigerated so the, here also uh, in india also chillers are available in indigenous market of course we had chillers from sulger but uh, in india many chill blue star is there and all that they all are giving chillers for so that is for pre cooling unit after air compressor then uh, once you uh, get a temperature of 12 degrees then you need uh, uh, dryers for dryers these are the vessels uh, working at a pressure of 5 to 6 kg per centimeter square so there there are two beds that is alumina and molecular sieve so this is also again uh, imported from uh, outside and of course here also i think probably some bidders are there for this material then but we depend it we are buying from outside then the change over walls are there the change over walls also uh, we had we were buying from fisher and all that from outside but these are costly walls but of course some walls are indigenously also available. then comes your exchangers exchangers you have to solely depend upon international bidders as i tell you there are lpma members sumitomo uh, your linde then uh, trane then, so there are so many bidders are there of course chinese bidders are also there in supply of heat exchangers but since we had uh, exchangers from lpma members we didn't go for chinese exchangers of course chinese plants are cheaper but uh, they have made it cost effective uh, economical but the material selection is there uh, slightly poor is there and then uh, there your cold box in cold box the columns are there the columns can be fabricated here also stainless steel columns are there uh, say lower column upper column and absorbers there are in absorbers you need the mobile sorbent and silica gel these are also outside available then um, pipelines pumps so you will have to make a choice from international bidders and indigenous bidders what material you can procure from inside and for find what material you have to compulsory buy from outside due to safety reasons okay fine thanks sir so sir next question is after procurement of these machineries how much time does it take to uh, install and commission these machines and then after installation and commissioning of these machines how much time uh, does it take to start the production so these are uh, the mr. two tenants mr vikas i had to go out somewhere so i didn't follow up for last 15 minutes i am yes. rejoining the meeting uh, yes sir no problem so uh, sir the question is about uh, how much time does it take Uh, after procurement of machineries to uh, install and commission these machineries and then after uh, installation and commissioning of these machineries how much time does it take to uh, start the production you mean asus yes sir okay. for asus uh, uh, you may make a network planning for supply of materials uh, of course it takes time Uh, you may be needing um, three to four years, three years, because uh, you order then the, the international builders they make uh, ready according to your requirement. Then other materials. Sir, how about smaller plants? How about smaller plants that uh, you said that can be made in say uh, uh, start in uh, say five six months or even skin plants which can start in. Uh, These are skin mounted plants. These can be made in one and. I mean, one year's period or one half period, whatever. If the material is indigenously available, there is no issue. 
Mm-hmm. Once you are depending upon international bidders, then you will have to wait because uh, you have to order, you have to get it. So that takes time. And of course, uh, so far as production is concerned, uh, the production comes in uh, your three days, three to four days. It comes in production. Fine, fine. And uh, one more question is there: Can anybody start a oxygen manufacturing plant, or there has to be some background related to it? So is there a mandatory qualification or uh, of? Uh, can, can I can I uh, yes. comment? Yes, sir. Please. See, for starting a plant, the person who is willing to invest should first determine where he is going to put up the plant. I mean, the place and the market surrounding that. Once that is frozen, then the size of the plant can be worked out. And uh, as Mr. Sina was telling, I have experience in uh, commi- buying, commissioning, and starting a Chinese plant. And uh, uh, no doubt they are very cheap, but we have uh, taken some uh, precautions. Like, for example, compressor manufacturer we chose, main heat exchanger manufacturer we chose. All instrumentations uh, were uh, of uh, European uh, manufacturers. Some of them were based in China, but they were maintaining the same standards. So there is a lot of options available. It is not Chinese. I mean, our first plant, which has been running for 11 years, uh, barring some minor uh, issues, we, have, we had no problem. It's the 11th year the plant is running. So, no doubt it is a small plant, 45 tons per day. So uh, I think uh, for a buyer, there are a lot of options available in China. And our second plant, which we, again, I was completely involved in that right from uh, deciding who will supply the plant. We visited China and met some five, six manufacturers and zeroed in on one. So here also same thing. The main heat exchanger we have chosen. We have chosen the uh, compressor supplier. We have chosen the instrumentation completely by uh, companies of uh, European base. Some, uh, of course, in China, lo- most of the European base uh, manufacturers have an arm there. For example, Atlas Copco has a Atlas Copco China, which, but at the same time they maintain the same standards. We visited them also. Uh, and the turbines, turbines are again a very important uh, power saving devices. Uh, generally, turbines of European or American uh, make are preferred. But now China, we had, we had visited uh, one turbine manufacturers and <coughs> we are quite confident and we, we did uh, uh, finalize on the Chinese t- turbine manufacturer. We hope to get a good uh, result. It may take another. Sir. See, our, our timeline, I'll tell you from the time. Time we ordered it took one year three months for the plant to be ready one month for shipping uh, three four months we uh, hope to commission and uh, after commissioning we start getting production yeah that's my Sir, i think i think uh, the majority of the people have this one question say today if i'm an entrepreneur and i have say about 50 lakhs with me and i want to set up a plant uh, and make it commissioned within say next one to two months is it possible any kind I mean, can I start generating oxygen uh, cylinders? Or what to end use? Uh, uh, for, for medical? Industrial medical. Purpose? No, for no, medical, no. I think, yeah, two, three months you can probably get. Uh, I am not sure of the delivery periods now because there again, cylinders, uh, manufacturers are sold out. Uh, liquid oxygen, 200-liter uh, tanks or 900-liter tanks or 5KL, 6KL tanks. Nobody is having stock. Everybody is overbooked. So I am not sure of the VPSA plant manufacturer supply time. If uh, normal course, a VPSA plant can be manufactured in two, two and a half months and about 10 days to uh, commission. And uh, of course, the time taken for uh, transportation from the place it's manufactured. I think and uh, it can be done in 50 lakhs, is it? Uh, uh, see, as I was mentioning, 30 to 50,000 for a 5 liter per minute house tank. I think... Uh, it may be slightly more than 50 lakhs, 15,000 liter. I, I, I'm not sure of the pricing and delivery period of uh, because okay. these, And typically, uh, how much does one cylinder cost? The You mean manufacturing, cost of manufacturing? No, no, cylinder cost. Okay. No. So, this time, cylinder, cylinder cost, cost 8 to 10,000 yeah. per cylinder. Yeah. We we bought some uh, three thousand cylinders at eight thousand two hundred uh, recently, but now they have jacked up the prices. Pre COVID uh, second wave, we bought a large number of cylinders, which costs us. I mean, it is a special price because we keep buying cylinders regularly. 
uh, on so, an average about 10 to 12000 uh, uh, yeah it, it could be 10 and up 11000 now yeah. but availability is not there i was told uh, everybody is overbooked psm plant manufacturers cylinder manufacturers liquid oxygen tank storage and transport manufacturers tank everybody is overbooked right okay fine so i think uh, what we will do there is a good suggestion which is coming up in chat also that we'll try to make a flow chart on what are the different steps one should take right from scratch to set up a oxygen plant so Now what size what type yeah. what type what size yeah so yeah so we'll we if it is a asu it takes one year three months is this a uh, delivery period in china right. same thing when we had discussed uh, before ordering with china we had discussed with to european manufacturers they were t- first of all they they ask you where you are going to put up the plant if uh, so we are if we say we are going to put up in x place they will say we will not supply you because our own plant is there number one number two european plant delivery periods are two and up to three years and uh, the, the, the way i mean again with uh, due regards and respect to them they were they they work very very thoroughly but very casually you know i i am aware uh, of a uh, plant commissioned uh, About eight months back, where it took two and a half years, and the people who came for commissioning were so casual, you know, they come at nine o'clock, go at five o'clock. Whereas in our case, yeah. I mean, uh, companies like us, we we during the direct commissioning Sorry. time, we work almost ten, twelve hours. Sorry, yeah, please continue. Okay, fine. So uh, I think uh, we are running out of time. It's twelve o'clock, uh, and uh, sir, it's supposed to be one and half hours. Yes, sir. So it's just one, one, one last question. I have been asking this okay. since forever. To set up a two hundred okay. cylinder AC plant, how much power, hmm. land, and water capacity do we require? Like, what sort of water capacity uh, do we? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I am yes. answering this. So set up a uh, land. Ah, okay. Yes. Land is required. Thirty-five meter into twenty meter for two hundred cylinder. Hello. Okay. ASU plant. ASU plant for ASU plant. Two hundred cylinder ASU. Okay. Ah, yes. water water is required two thousand liter per day consumption, and power is required hundred okay. kilowatt. Uh, collected power should be required. Also. Uh, how much uh, time do we require to set up such a plant, and what will be the running cost before we get the break? Break even. Ha. Uh, actually, running cost is the one point two uh, units per meter cube. <coughs> Mother, actual actual consumption electricity. So electricity consumption is one point two hmm. unit per meter cube in this plant. Hmm. And time timing is the okay. uh, timing. Uh, here we can supply two to three months, and it is just skid mounted. After this, at your place, fifteen days required for commissioning. No, uh, okay. I, was, uh, I, I would example, like to. I would like to add here. Uh, uh, Universal Bosch is no doubt a very big uh, company and known company. There are others also who make gas oxygen plants. Uh, yes. I can provide the details if anybody is seriously interested. I'm 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 interested, sir. Okay, so sir, yeah, uh, uh, any communication has to be made. I'm uh, sir, I'm sir. To the, can, uh, to the contact you for the. So so I'm telling that. So uh, if you want to contact any of the speakers, you can please connect with us. Uh, my at my email ID uh, info at the rate solution buggy dot com, and we will connect you to the three speakers. and if you have any any further questions if you have any further questions you can send questions also in this so what we will do is we will try uh, i think we have recorded we are recording this uh, particular session and we'll try to send the link for the complete session and in uh, if there is a requirement for further questions then uh, you are free to ask either by email or you can log in to our website and go ahead so i think we are overshooting time and then uh, we have uh, one more small uh, uh, talk by uh, mr guru prasad who is my colleague and he will talk about uh, the requirements uh, or the opportunity of oxygen manufacturing in karnataka uh, guru, yeah so there? it is not a talk actually it's basically uh, you know uh, heads up 
that we are working with the government of Karnataka and uh, whoever is from uh, Karnataka, um, there is an opportunity to partner with DRDO for the technology transfer and uh, you know look at uh, you know, they are looking at about uh, setting up of 40 units across Karnataka. So whoever is interested, uh, we will send a separate email to all the ones who have joined from Karnataka and they can reply to it. And we can look at setting up uh, a discussion with the uh, government uh, authorities at about uh, 3 p.m. today. So again, uh, whoever is interested can send an email to info at the solution and connect with uh, Guru. DRDO is a VPSA plant, I suppose. Yes. Pardon me? From Karnataka, anybody who's interested? Uh, yeah, I am from Karnataka. What I want to know is yeah. whether the uh, technology is PSA or uh, what? What which technology out of the three? So they are doing the PSA technology. Okay, fine, fine. Yeah. Fine. So I would like to thank uh, every one of you to uh, uh, for you to join the session. So thanks to the speakers. Uh, and I hope that uh, this session was of immense value. Uh, and we were able to at least uh, get an idea of uh, how much time it takes, what is the break even, what are the types of different technologies that we are using, and how much time does it take to install and commission. So thanks to all of you. Uh, we'll connect again quickly. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, all of the speakers.